Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Christopher David Lawson of NEPA. Today we're going to do a trial run to see how fast my stock Hawk DLX will go. And then what we're going to do, we're going to swap out the sprockets in the chain and see if it makes anything different. Let's go ahead and roll the video. You think you know me. Alright folks, before we go out and do the uh, stock first run on here to see what my top speed is going to be with this Hawk DLX, I got a Nietzsche chain. This is 130 link like the stock chain. This is also an O-ring chain. We have a 45 tooth JT sprocket, sprocket for the rear. The stock one is 50 and of course I have the sprocket bolts. We're going to go ahead and change those out but first we got to go out and do a first trial run. See how what the uh, Hawk says it will do for a top speed. Alright folks we're going to jump on the Chanda here and get started. I'm going to go warm the bike up on the back roads a little bit and then we'll take it up on the uh, flattest section of road I can find and see what the top speed is at the setup right now which is a 1750 sprocket setup with the stock chain. We're not out to the part yet where we're doing the top speed but I'm just going to give you an example. Right now I'm in fifth gear which is the top gear for this bike doing about 49 miles an hour. This is it folks. I mean this is the top gear. This is all you got. We'll go faster obviously on the flats but you're basically most of the time anytime you're over 45 miles an hour you're running this thing in fifth gear which kind of sucks. And I know during acceleration I've got a couple stop signs to leave my block. I actually have to get into second gear to go one block. I'd rather be in one gear for stop sign to stop sign. You know, if you're doing stop and go traffic, even if you're not doing the hop, uh, high speed highway runs, you're going to probably like this uh, gear change out. This bank is basically geared for uh, off road, even though it's considered an on road and off road motorcycle. See, fourth gear right now, the on 35, and then bikes up to about 7,000 RPMs and 50 miles an hour acceleration. So, well, that's uh, 55 right there, doing 7,000 RPMs. We'll get it going as fast as we can as soon as we hit the uh, open road after I've warmed it up a little bit. Just for reference, folks, I'm running the uh, stock rims and chain again but the tires I have on here are Shinkos they are geared more to uh, maybe 70 30 for as far as highway and uh, off-road use I don't ever off-road with this thing too much so but just to give you an idea on the tires I'm using too this is the DLX stock rims they're bigger than the carbureted version and also my setup with the bike I'm running the stock exhaust but I don't have the baffle in it I just have the end cap, I cut the baffle, baffle off of it and I'm running a uh, air intake. For those of you that haven't watched my videos before with this bike, I haven't uh, tuned it yet. It should be tuned. I might get to that eventually. Alright, just getting ready to get up here uh, to the main road. Hopefully it's not too busy today. Hopefully no uh, state troopers sitting out here waiting for people. Not that this bike's that fast, but still don't want to get caught speeding. Alright folks, once we get up here uh, past McDonald's, we're going about 55 right now. I'm going to go ahead and get on it and basically stay on it all the way into town. So, here we go. And I will get into a little bit of a tuck too. Hopefully you can see the speedometer pretty good. I'll try to run the GPS of the uh, camera. We're doing about 62 right now. We're not in the quite flat section yet, but basically I'm full throttle right now. 7,500 going up a little bit of a hill. This is all the power it's got, folks. Hopefully once uh, we get to this next section, you'll see what we can do. There we go. That's still at full throttle. Sixty-three, sixty-four is about the fastest I hit today. I have hit sixty-eight. It all depends on the day and the conditions, but all things even, we're doing it on the same day and same uh, conditions. So, so sixty-one. This.
this is all the bike's got today. 62. Got one last section with a little slight flat and downhill. But I think that's all the bike's going to give me today. 64 was about all I hit. It's not going to get me any more than 62 today. All right, folks, I got my tools all lined up. We did our uh, first initial top speed run. I'm going to start off by taking the cover off here. And then, of course, we're going to have to take the chain and the back wheel off. I got my jack and my 2x4s over there. It's a 10 millimeter screw to pull the uh, cover off. And, of course, I got my wrenches, my chain tool, my sprockets, and I've got the uh, Sir Clip pliers to pull the clip off. And that's how we're going to pull the sprocket off. We're not going to need wrenches to take that off because we're taking the uh, sprocket bolts off at the same time. Alright folks, before I go too far and start taking the chain off, I got the cover off. It's a good time to go through and clean some of these areas you really can't get to on here. This chain's been adjusted multiple times, but you can see a lot of slack still. We're getting toward the end of its lifetime here. Uh, these things have been known to break on people, but 1500 miles, it's done the job. Now we're going to go ahead and throw the new sprocket and everything on. So. Good time to clean everything up, folks. We're going to go ahead and try to take the chain off next before I put it on the jack. All right, we're going to take one of the links out here, take it apart at one of the links. The tool I'm using just came off of Amazon. This is for anything from a 420 to a 530 chain. This has a 428 chain on it. And of course, all you do, line everything up in there and push it out. If you got everything lined up correctly, folks, it shouldn't be that hard to do that. It should push the pin right out the other side of the tool. And then the chain should come right off. Say, I've kept this thing greased up pretty good too. So, it's just, it's time for a nicer, heavier duty O-ring chain. Might as well have a new chain on there to go with the new sprockets. And the pin fell out the other side, so we're good to take this chain off now. Go ahead and pull it off your sprocket and just drag it out of there. I won't throw it away quite yet. I'll probably throw it away after I get the new chain on there. Of course, make sure nothing's binding up on your sprockets. And simple as that, really not that hard of a job to I'll do. Go ahead and get my uh, jack and everything set up. And I'm gonna, before that, I'm gonna go ahead and loosen some of this stuff up while it's still on the ground. A little easier to loosen stuff up. I've had these things off here enough times, but it's really not that hard to uh, get it on and off, so. All right, to pull the rear axle, you need a 17 millimeter and a 19 millimeter wrench. Basically everything should just slide out as you're doing it. You might have to take a screwdriver or something get that all the way through, but just have to get that axle worked out through the other side. And of course as you pull the shaft out, you have spacers on either side. Just make sure you use the right spacers when you put this back together later. Don't ever be afraid to take pictures as you go if this is the first time working on this. And also your brake calipers held on with the bolt and everything. All right, folks, here's the uh, new sprocket over top of the old sprocket before we take it apart, just to give a good idea what 50 to 45 does. And of course, some people go to 43. You can get a 40 that will fit this, but now what we gotta do is we gotta take this clip off. This is actually the clip here that holds the whole sprocket on, not these bolts. That's why we're replacing the bolts and everything at the same time, because I'm gonna try and pull it all off at once. Basically, I'm just using these from uh, Harbor Freight, these clip removers, and sticking them in the hole there, and basically try to do this with one hand the best I can, uh, not lose the, cl the uh, clip. That's basically what holds on your sprocket right there. That is it. With any luck, I should be able to pull this right off now with the bolts and all. Hopefully this comes out. Yeah, that was a piece of cake. That's a lot easier than trying to take the uh, nuts off there and pulling it that way, folks. I've seen a lot of people do that. And they've screwed up their bushings, they've screwed up everything on here. All right, some people replace the bushings. Mine looked really good, so I didn't bother pulling them out. There are other people that did videos replacing the bushings. I'm not doing that, like I said, mine are good. Went ahead and cleaned everything up really good. Put a little grease in there to kind of preserve everything. And now we're gonna put the sprocket on. There are two different sized holes. You want the larger holes here. 
we're just lining it up like this you want the flat side of the JT sprocket sitting out there is a ridge side on the other side if you look at them when you first get the uh, sprocket FYI folks too you do have to tighten the uh, sprocket bolts down to the sprocket before you put it on because there's nothing to hold these in place unfortunately like on the stock one that I just took off the bike but yeah 14 millimeter wrench and something to hold it on the back so you can tighten it down to the sprocket. All right, once you have them tightened down on there you will be able to snug them down a little bit they will hold themselves in place afterwards but by all means do this step first everything's greased up just got to line the holes up slide it in everything should slide in there pretty good might have to pound them down in there a little bit but everything's greased and lined up just got to put the clip back on there Is this lined up in there pretty good? We should be good to go. I might push down on it with a little bit more of the screwdriver because it didn't snap back in there all the way just yet. But that should snap back in the place once it's actually holding the sprocket in. There. Now it's holding the sprocket on. That sprocket is not coming out again, folks. All right, I got the back wheel back on here loosely. Make sure you clean up as much as you can. Good time to clean up your bike, get rid of some of the dirt and grease. Put some fresh grease in here. Make sure you don't get brake uh, grease on your brake rotors or your pads because that's a pain in the ass and it's not supposed to go there. But now what I'm doing, I'm feeding the uh, Nietzsche O-ring chain through here and then we're going to feed it from here all the way back and then we're going to go ahead and install the master link on the chain. This is where you're going to have to make sure your wheel is pushed all the way forward so you can get the master links together to hold it. Kind of a pain in the butt doing it by yourself. If you got a friend that can come and help you do it, do it at this point, by all means, I recommend it. But once we start the master link, make sure you get the O-rings in the back part and in the front part of the chain here and here. This is where you need to have the wheel loose, folks, so you can fit all this stuff together. There, now it should hold itself in place pretty good. It's just a matter of getting the uh, new O-rings on there and then getting everything seated into place. They do send you a tube of uh, lubrication to use on this chain. Nice thing about the O-rings, O-rings will be what hold the grease on the chain a little better than a regular chain. And then they recommend every 300 to 350 miles. Obviously, if you're in the dirt, you're going to want to wash it and relube your chain again. All right, folks, it was too hard for me to show you as I was actually doing it. I moved the master link up here just to hold everything in place. Basically, what I did is I slid the outside part on here. There's a little channel on there, and all you do is you take the little key thing here. Always have it facing that way with the closed end, the direction that the chain's going. This clip, I just pushed it on with a screwdriver. Once you had it lined up with a little uh, groove that's in the master links, it just slides in there. Now to take it off, you will obviously pry it and take it off. You will end up destroying this part, so you would have to get another one of these again if you ever have to take the chain off. But it really is simple, folks. I used a screwdriver. I didn't use any special tools to take this on and off. Now all we got to do, we got to make sure everything is lined up pretty good. I'm going to grease it up chains loose obviously but I just want to make sure everything is spinning okay before I start tightening everything up doesn't look like I got anything rubbing up here we'll get it lubricated all right folks I feel like I got everything on there pretty straight kept some a decent amount of slack on the chain right now of course this will loosen up as you go next couple weeks I'll have to tighten it down again but I feel like I got everything lined up pretty hey, good folks, on it. I did a couple loops around the block here. I could already tell just getting up to about 30, 35 miles an hour. I like this gear ratio on here already with the uh, 1745. But don't see me changing it again. But we're going to go ahead and jump on this thing and get it all warmed back up again out in the back roads. And then we'll go out in the main road and do the exact same thing we did uh, earlier in the video. All right, we're going back out. Going to do the exact same thing. I'm actually in third gear going 39 miles an hour. You know, that's based off the speedometer, 39, 49, 40 miles an hour. 
normally I'd already have to be getting uh, thinking about fifth gear already I would definitely already be in fourth gear bikes only about 6500 rpms we're not pushing it I definitely got to relearn my uh, shift points going up the hills here I need to keep it down in fourth where I was doing fifth gear uh, earlier and cruising along it'll be a learning process but we'll get it figured out back through our tunnel get ourselves to the stop sign here and head out on the road like I said hopefully no state troopers again I don't think I'm gonna be uh, having to worry about that too much with that this bike still All right, like before folks as soon as we get up by the McDonald's I'm gonna put it in uh, full throttle I'm actually in fourth gear still all right here we go get myself into a little bit of a tuck seems like we're already getting up though there's the 64 I could only hit that earlier I don't know it's not really uh I feel like I got a little bit more wind hit me but last time I could only main 62 so let's see once we get to that spot I'm maintaining about two miles an hour what more than what I was doing so let's see 65 come on bike 66 huh so far that's only about four miles an hour more now we're maintaining 65 instead of 62 61 most I was able to hit there's 66 67 and of course you'll be able to follow along with the uh, number actually from the GoPro 68 67 definitely an improvement uh, I wish they'd improve the roads of course on a day when I'm not really fighting the wind is bad I'll probably do a little bit better but I'm about five miles an hour over of course now I got traffic in front of me so 68 If it's gonna let me uh, go much faster than that though being out of the tuck now 66 we did a little better though but that's about all I could get out of her today though as I said I was hitting 60 uh, 68 before but of course it all goes by weather conditions I'm actually able to shift down and cruise at a lower rpm at least with the uh, gearing here I don't know I'm happy with it not that I'm going to get a lot more top speed because obviously you lose some acceleration having uh, the gears the way they are and this motor is not that powerful folks the only way you're really going to get any real speed improvements to a different motor or rebuild this one I'm dropping down into gears a little early but I don't feel like I'm winding out as bad here at 30 miles an hour going through town let's say I probably could cruise a little bit better and uh my town gears now but uh, either way I'm happy with this change hey right, folks thanks for tuning into my channel it did make a difference changing the gears out I actually can stay in gear a little bit longer in town too I don't have to quite shift as early but of course we're gonna catch all the stop signs and stuff going on here in town thanks for tuning into my channel though folks bye for now